this is a video to help you with the flanged bushing detail and give you the tools to work with the rest of the assignments in this lesson. If you take a look at it, there are not a lot of dimensions showing you exactly what the diameter is of these circles. So you have to know that this circle right here on the left is really the front face of this detail, which is the side view. So this 3.5 that illustrates this top, this long rectangle is really the side view of the circle. So the diameter for the outside circle is 3.5 and then if you work your way down here this solid circle is 2 which is the side view of this piece that's actually circular and then the one here inch diameter if you see a circle with a line through it like that it means its diameter of the smaller circle would help to represent these here hidden lines that are coming through which is actually a hole that goes all the way through we also have a hidden line circle that is the diameter here of 1.5 this piece that is angled back will show as a hidden line. We have a center line that is a note that says that 0.25 diameter, eight holes. So there are eight holes there equally spaced on a 2.75 diameter here circle. So let's get started. In AutoCAD, we're going to open up the fifth drawing right here and then save it as our assignment name. Notice that this drawing already has layers set up for you to use so that you can put those objects on the layers that are specific to those objects. We're going to double check these and I'll be able to show you how to do this so that when you create the other assignments, you'll know how to work with layers. So if you go ahead and pick on layer properties, you'll see that the new layers were created like we did in the first assignment by using this new layer icon. And then when you select for instance, the center layer, you can pick right on the word continuous where it says line type. It's already changed the center, but I'm showing you that to change it, you can click right on that. That word, the, the default is continuous and then pick the load button. And this is where you can load all of your different line types. So the center was already loaded. Once it was loaded, then it was selected so that that layer could be the name center. The same thing with, with the hidden layer. A hidden layer was created and then in the line type column, we were able to click on continuous, load the hidden line type, and then select it so that this layer is hidden. In this layer dialog box, we're also going to change something. Let's highlight the red layer, which is like the objects layer that we used in the first assignment, and change the line weight here. We're going to change the default line weight. Click on the word default for the red layer to 0 0.6. This way the objects are going to be darker in the plot preview. We didn't go to the plot preview in our last assignment, but this assignment, we will take a look at that. And I'll also show you how to display the line weights so that you can see which lines are darker. Okay, so highlight here point 0 0.6, pick okay. And because we're going to start with that layer, we're gonna double click on the little sheet of paper to the left of the layer called red, which is going to be for our objects. I'm going to close out of the layer properties, um, their dialog box, and verify that red is the top layer or the object layer um, 
that's current. Okay, so we said that the first bigger circle is going to be 3.5 in diameter. So I'll go to Circle, Center, Diameter in the drop down. You could even um, type in the word circle if you'd like to start the command, making sure that you are going to draw the diameter. Go ahead and click a center point anywhere and then type in 3.5 and enter. I can see that this drawing has snaps on, so at the very bottom, I'm going to turn off both the grid and the snap. So these two first icons that are just to the right of the word model, if we click on those so that they're gray, then the grid and the snap is turned off here in the screen. We're also going to have an object layer or a red um, object that's a diameter of two. So we'll go to circle center diameter. This time we want to click on the center of this existing circle, type in two and enter. And then one more here for that smaller diameter of one center. So circle center diameter, click here, type in one and enter. Now we're ready to draw the circle that the center line circle that the smaller circles are on, and that would be 2.75 diameter. So we'll go first of all to the layer drop down and pick right on the layer center. This way we're changing the layer so that now instead of having the red layer current, we're going to change it to here center. Now when we go to circle center diameter, we click here that center, the same center. We're going to type in 2.75 and enter. And there's my center line. We also have another circle that is hidden. So to get used to working with layers, we can go over to the layer drop down, click right on the word hidden and then go to circle center diameter, click the center of the circle, and then that diameter we said was based on this circle that's back here, or this hole that is created from this diagonal here part. So we can type in over here 1.5 and enter. I have a white background and you guys are probably working with black and since this drawing has some lighter layers, I'm going to change my background back to black. I'm going to right click and pick options. Yours is probably already black. In the display tab, I'm going to click on colors and up at the top right, I'm going to change my color back to black and pick apply and close and okay. For these videos, it might be a little bit easier for you to see it with the black background and work with the same colors that I'm working with. And now there's an object snap that's down at the bottom. We looked a little bit at object snaps where we can pick up different geometric positions to snap on to our objects. In this drawing, the quadrant object snap is already turned on. I just wanted to show you that down at the bottom corner, you can go to that arrow next to object snaps and get this menu and then make sure the quadrant is checked because the quadrant will help us to snap to the different 0, 90, 180, 270 um, areas of a circle. So we can now draw this small circle here at the top, which is a diameter of 0.25. So we'll go to layers and change our layer back to red, which would be our objects for those circles. Now we can go to circle center diameter and we can pick the top of that center line circle as our center point and type in 0.25 and enter. 
we have one circle, but we know from the previous lesson we can use array. So we'll go to here, polar array, select the circle, enter it, pick a center point, which will be the center of this entire part circle. And then we want to change the items. At the top left corner, you should see six under items. We want a total, total amount, total circles or holes to be eight. So I'll type in eight. I can press enter on the keyboard and I see my eight circles. I can then pick the close array green check mark to end the command or click in space. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're going to track over to line up the side view with this front view. So I want to make sure, first of all, that the red layer is current. And I, I love this command because if you want to start the line over here someplace from the top of the circle, you can start the line command and then just rest your pointer rest your pointer at the top of this bigger circle and look what happens when you pull your mouse away from that circle you're leaving this little alignment point looks like a little plus sign but if you go over it again you see it disappears so just rest your pointer on that quadrant object stamp right there don't click pull your mouse straight over make sure that, that tracking vector is showing come over to give yourself enough room for the dimensions and click. You can use tracking to line up the top of our part so that it's at the same height in both views. I can now pull my mouse down and type in 3.5 and enter. Pull my mouse to the right, don't click, and type in 0.25 and enter. Pull your mouse straight up and type in 3.5 and enter and then see for close or pick close in the dialog box or pick close in the command line. Now there are several different ways you can draw this. I know that there's a dimension of two that comes from this solid circle. So I'll use tracking again. I can start the line command, rest my pointer on the top of the solid line just drag my mouse over until I hit this tall rectangle and click. Now you see I can start start it there, start the line there. I can pull my mouse to the left and type in 0.5 and enter. That came from this dimension here of 0.5. And then straight down I'll type in 2 and enter. And then I'll come back to this rectangle and click. And then enter. Or right click and pick enter. Now, I think the best way to continue with this is to get a little more experience with offset. We have an offset potentially of 3.25 and then one of 1. So we'll start the offset command. It's and then after you start the offset command, you can type in 3.25 and enter. And then select this line on the left side as your object to offset and pick anywhere on the right hand side. And now we have an offset of one back towards the left with this new line. So you can either start the offset command again or you can select this new line, pull your mouse to the left and type in one and enter. And now I have the 3.25 offset plus back one for these dimensions. If we created a center line and then offset it 0.75, which would be half of this diameter 1.5, we could use it to create this diagonal line. Or we can verify that the midpoint object snap is on. So let's do this so that you can learn a little bit more. Down here at the bottom, we're going to click on the arrow next to this object snap icon and go click on midpoint. 
so there's a check mark next to it. Now we can start the line command and just rest your pointer at the midpoint. The hardest part about this is not clicking. If you rest your pointer there and you just pull your mouse up and type in 0.75 and enter. See what it does? It tracks from the midpoint up 0.75. Now I can come over and click at the top of this line. Come over straight and click here to line it up. So just so that you can see the difference, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right across here that's going to represent my center line. And I'll keep it on the object layer or the red layer so that I can show you how to move it to the right layer. And since we picked up the midpoint object snap here, I can start the line from the midpoint of this front face. So I'll start the line command. I'll click here. This time I'm clicking for a midpoint. I'll pull my mouse across and anywhere here I'm going to go ahead and click. Right click and enter or use the escape key either way. Now I'm going to use offset to offset this line down 0.75. So I'll start the offset command type in 0.75 and enter. Select this new line that I just drew as the center line. Pull your mouse down and click. There's the 0.75 which is half of 1.5. Now I can start the line command, click here at the intersection of these two lines, click the end of this line for that diagonal line and pull your mouse over and click. See two different ways. I'm going to right click and pick enter. Two different ways of drawing th this diagonal line. I don't need this line so I'm going to go ahead and select it. You can either pick the erase icon or you can right click and pick erase. Now I have to clean up these corners here so I think just for you to get more experience with the trim command, I'm going to start the trim command, which is right next to erase there. And then with the new release of 2021, you can instantly click on this corner and clean it up. If you have anything older, like 2020 or older, you would then have to press enter in order to click on it to get rid of it. I'll go ahead and click here and then right click and enter. Now you would need to move this solid line that's on the red layer to the center line layer. So a very quick way of moving objects to the right layer will be to select the line and then go to the layer drop down and click right on the name of the layer you want it to move to. See how easy that was to move to the appropriate layer. Use your escape key to get rid of the grips. You can also use those grips, so let's go ahead and select that line again, and then click right in the blue grip and let go. Pull your mouse over a little bit to the left and click so that you can stretch that line out and then escape. Now we do have this hidden line here that comes from this smaller circle that represents the whole diameter of one. So we're going to offset this center line 0.5 up and 0.5 down. So I'll start the offset command, type in 0.5 and enter select this center line and click up and then select that same center line and click down. Now again I'm going to use my escape key. These lines need to be on a different layer. This is good good experience for you. I'm going to select both of these lines and then go up to the layer drop down and pick right on the word hidden. 
using my escape key or instead of escaping out of that which which you can and then select these lines you can either trim these lines or we can stretch them back so sometimes I like to click inside these blue grips right here and pull these back so that now they look like what the drawing is showing and they represent this solid circle. Now you can use your escape key to get rid of those grips. I'd like to introduce something to you that we're going to be talking about later, but uh, so that you get an idea that this drawing is already set up. The hidden lines and the center lines are controlled by a line type scale. The bigger the drawing, the bigger the line type scale. So just to check it, if you type in LT scale, all one word, LT scale, and enter. What you'll see in your command line down here at the bottom is that this drawing is already set up with a 0.5 line type scale factor, which gives it that tight kind of hidden line look. The default is one. So let's just look at what it would look like if you started a brand new drawing. So if I type in one and enter, you see how the, the hidden lines are opened up a little bit more? Then they actually look more like the handout. But I think that they're set up smaller so that we can really see these hidden lines in this tall rectangle, this side view of, of our detail. So let's type in LT scale, all one word and enter, and then 0.5 to set it back and enter. So these hidden lines and center lines that are inside this tall rectangle represent the top and bottom of these smaller circles. And when we track, notice when you start the line command, and you just put your pointer close to these, the circle, you can't get the quadrant to be on top. And that's because we created a polar array and all of these circles are kind of attached together. I'm going to escape out of that. We're going to explode this set of arrays so that each one of those circles has its own properties. Because right now, if I click on these circles, I would go back to the dialog box or the ribbon at the top that would be all about changing the array. So let's escape out of that. We can use the explode command, which is right underneath the erase command right there. You can even type in explode. So start the explode command, select these circles that are in the array and then enter. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but look at what happens when you put your pointer next to the circle. It's independently on its own. Plus we can track from the top of the circle so that we can get these hidden lines. So let's go to layers and drop the layer list down and make the hidden line current. So we want to click right on the word hidden. Now we're going to start the line command and this is great practice for tracking. We're just going to rest our pointer at the top of the small circle here and pull your mouse over. Don't click until you get over to this rectangle and then click Then come over to the other side of the rectangle and click and then right click and enter. Okay, so you can see the hidden line that represents the top of the circle. We'll do the hidden lines first. So start the line command, rest your pointer at the bottom of this smaller circle, pull your mouse straight across and click, pull your mouse here on the other side and click, right click and enter. Now if you want to draw those lines and then trim them, that works too. I just thought I'd introduce to you and show you this quick way of using tracking. So start the line command, rest your pointer, at the quadrant of the next circle, come over here, click, and click on the other side, right click and enter. You go a little bit faster, you can always pause the video 
I'm just going to go ahead and draw these. So I'm coming and tracking across each one of these lines. You can even right click to repeat the line. Instead of going back all the time to the line icon, you can right click and repeat the line command. So I'm tracking over, I'm clicking, I'm right clicking and picking enter, then I'm right clicking and repeating the line command. It's up to you. If you're uncomfortable with menus, you can always press enter or go up to the line icon if you'd like. So each one of these small circles needs a little hidden line that represents the top and the bottom of the circle in this side view. Now we can change the layer to center and do the same thing. Start the line command. This time I'm going to rest my pointer at the center of the circle, the small circle. And when I pull my mouse over, I want to find a spot just before the rectangle and click and pull my mouse over here and click. Now notice what happens. I'm going to right click and pick enter. The hidden line or the center line is not showing. And it's not showing because of the scale. We have to make this line a little longer in order for the center line to show. See, I used, I used grips, and that's the reason that the line type scale was a little bit smaller. So when you place the center line, the little dash is not going to show unless this line is long enough. So for my next one, I'll make it a little longer. I'll start the line command. I'll rest my pointer at the center of the circle. It's very close to the other red line, so we want to be careful we don't um, hit it. In fact, you could get close enough that you could just pull it across here to pick your two points. Line, command, rest your pointer at the center. This is very, very close. Actually, it should be right on. Yeah, it's right on this center. So I'll go down to the next one here. I'm going to come across and click, pull my mouse over. I can kind of see where, how, when the center appears and um, place that center line. So one last one here at the bottom. I know it has to be somewhat long. I'm going to click here, pull my mouse over, and click. Right click and enter. Now I have my hidden lines and my center lines that represent those circles. Looks like we're ready to dimension. So we'll go up to the layer text. We'll just go ahead and put our dimensions on the layer called text. So click right on the word text to make that current. And based on the last video, you know that we can go to linear here. So in the annotation panel, we can click on linear. I'll click the top of this rectangle, the bottom of the rectangle, pull my mouse over and click. And the first thing you'll notice is at the, that the precision is a little bit long right it's four places to the right of the decimal so we're going to type in the letter D and enter we'll pick the modify button we can then change our precision in the primary units tab to 0, 0.00 and then pick OK and close and there's our uh, three point now we might want to add, according to this assignment, it does show a little diameter there that's not typically usual, but we'll put it in. So double click on the number and then you see the blinking cursor is to the left of 3.5. We can go up to symbol in the ribbon 
and click here on diameter, which you can see is percentage percentage C. So we could have typed in on the keyboard percentage percentage C and we would have gotten a diameter right there. Now click in space and you've got your little symbol there. So let's go to the next one. We'll go up to linear for the dimension. We'll click here at the top of this red line that represents the diameter of 2. I'll go ahead and place it. So I clicked at the top, click at the bottom, come over, click. Again, we have um, to put diameter. Let's go ahead and put this 1.5 so that we can put diameter on both of them. So we'll go up to linear and click over here at the far right, the top and the bottom of this line and click. And now if you double click on the two right here, you can go up to symbol and pick diameter. Click in space, do the same thing for this one. You can click right on it and then go to symbol and diameter and click in space. Cool. So I'm going to uh, right click and pick enter or escape out of that. I need to stretch this center line over a little bit because it was in the way of my dimension. Use my escape key and I'm ready to dimension the rest. I'm going to go to linear and click on these two corners to get my 0.5 and linear again to click on the top of this rectangle to get the 0 0.25. It's okay to leave it like this. If you wanted to pull the number over, you could click on it and click in the blue grip that's close to the text and just pull it over and click. Use your escape key to get out of um, that. Okay, it's okay if it has 0 0.5 there. Um, let's move forward and click on linear. I'll go at the bottom two corners to get the 3.25 and linear again which you can right click and repeat the dim linear command to get the diagonal line here of one that looks like the dimensions for the right hand side what we have over here is um, what we could use for now is in the linear menu here where we got the dimensions, we can click on diameter and then click on that small circle, pull your mouse up and click. Now we need to add all of this text so you know we can double click on it. Now be careful here because the blinking cursor is on the left side of this number. You can just delete it and then type everything in if you want or if you want to keep the diameter symbol, you can use the arrow keys to arrow over this blinking cursor to the other side, and then you can press enter and continue typing. Eight holes um, equal space on 2.75 diameter. You, you don't have to put in the BC. Go ahead and click in space and you have your note. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but if you'd like to, you can replace this number with DIA. Okay, I'm going to escape out of that and go back to here, this linear dropdown and pick diameter again. So I can click this smaller circle and pull my mouse down and click for this diameter of one. Practicing different commands like polar array, being able to use different layers, and use dimensions. I would like to add one more thing for your experience here. The text, like we did in the first video, if you go to multi-line text so that we can finish this detail and use it for our portfolios, you can click here on the arrow underneath this text and click on multi-line text and then down here I'm going to click a point 
pull my mouse across and click another point and then type in with your cap locks on I'm gonna let you decide on the title usually I would put assignment and the number but if you want to just put your your cap locks on and type in Fland Bushing and then go ahead and put your name you can then highlight Fland Bushing and underline it and then click in space like the first video if you select it and then hold your left mouse button down on it you can move it around if you'd like to adjust where it's at okay couple more things I want to show you and I'll go ahead and maximize the screen one thing is that when you print this let's take a look at the printing properties as an introduction when you go up to the top left and click on plot what you're going to do here is find your printer maybe you don't have a printer so you can use um, a PDF if you'd like to create a high quality PDF right here or you can print it using one of your printers that you have plugged in or or, or have availability to it's up to you in this online class we're not printing but I'd like to show you this so that you can get used to using it and also possibly create a PDF here's the paper size we do want to change the plot area so what to plot we want to change the display to window and then what you're doing is you're you're creating a window so you click in space and you pull your mouse across here and click another point so that you have kind of a window that you're going to be able to preview we're going to put a check mark and center the plot we're going to leave the paper scale as fit to paper we want it to fit to the the window that we created and we do want to change our plot style table at the top right under pen assignments we want it to print monochrome which is black and white in case you have a color printer or you just want it all to be black and white so that you don't have the colors you can click on monochrome and we'll come back to layouts here we're right now in the model layout so we're okay we're gonna pick yes and then apply it to the layout if you pick apply to layout we're going to lock those printing settings in and then always preview so over here at the bottom left corner we can click on preview see when you click on preview you'll be able to see that the red layer that we made a little bit thicker for the objects is going to show right here this is your print preview okay so we're not printing but it's up to you if you want to I'm going to right click and pick exit and then because I play picked apply to layout it's going to be saved for me let's go ahead and cancel out of this the other way to see your line weights is to click at the very bottom right corner there's an icon that looks like three horizontal lines this menu is going to give you all of these tools at the bottom right corner so all of these that are checked are actually on and open so most of the time you want to leave those on but there is here a tool called line weight so if we put it click on line weight and notice when you unclick it you see that it's adding one more icon here at the bottom so put a check mark in front of line weight and then down here you'll see the new icon when you click on it it will display here your objects that are bolder or have a line weight that's heavier so because the model space is not set up for a direct print preview we're zooming in and out and you notice what happens when you zoom really far 
out, it gets bolder. It's not really a true preview of how it's going to print until you go into the plot dialog box and pick preview. But it does give you an idea of how your line weights are going to be displayed. I can now come over here and turn off this line weight display here to continue working. Okay, picking up new tools as we move forward to create new assignments.